For many retailers, 2011 didn't end with a happy Christmas. The global economy is faltering and incomes are being squeezed by austerity measures, rising taxes, plus increased fuel and food costs. The main casualty in the UK was Tesco, which just issued its first profit warning in 20 years. Elsewhere, French retailer Carrefour, which has issued five profit warnings in 15 months, is pulling back from its hypermarket programme. It's still challenging, it's still challenging around the world. Even though sales may have looked across the board as if they were a little better than people were expecting, in the UK in particular, consumers held back right until the week before Christmas. By that time, things were heavily discounted. Even though sales may look better, the real, the real victims will be profit margins. And we might not know that until people start reporting their profits in March time. Difficult trading conditions are forcing retailers to change the way they operate. UK retailer WH Smith has enjoyed some success by shifting its focus from the high street to the more lucrative outlets in airports and train stations. Sainsbury's meanwhile bucked the trend to deliver decent Christmas sales figures, but its performance was flattered somewhat by including VAT and store extensions in its reported figure. Yes, but we report on a, on a consistent basis, so um, nevertheless we outperform the industry and on virtually any metric. Uh, we did better than our competition, particularly over the four weeks of Christmas. People are buying a lot more promotions uh, and they're looking for value. They're much more savvy. Savvy shoppers uh, are very much at the heart of, of what you see in, in terms of consumer behaviour. But they're also tending to shop more frequently and when they shop, they buy a little bit less. Luxury retailers have generally performed well despite the global economic slump. But a big question for investors this year is whether the wealthy Asian consumers that help drive the sector's success will continue to splash their cash if their own economy shows signs of slowing. Tiffany's just reported an unexpected slowdown in sales in the US, Europe and Asia. And there are now concerns that consumers across the whole wage spectrum are starting to tighten their belts. So where does that leave an upmarket high street chain like Karen Millen? It's really our job to be close to our customer. We have very loyal customers. We actually have a very good, di our designers have a good dialogue with them. And I guess what we've done, and if we take Christmas as an example, we've reflected how their, their buying patterns are changing. So our Christmas range, our party wear range, which we're very well known for, was certainly sort of what we would call slightly more versatile. So somebody could buy it definitely it was for a party and look great. Uh, dress it up maybe, but equally recognise that she could wear it again, she could dress it down slightly. Some investors are finding it difficult to get excited about the retail sector's prospects this year, but it's not all bad news. Public policy will continue to constrain consumer spending, but there are some signs that inflationary pressures could be easing. A lot of the problems that were caused in 2011 uh, were a byproduct of global inflation uh, levels, particularly in, in raw materials like cotton. Um, uh, but, but also in uh, sort of petrol related products and, and that squeezed disposable income a lot especially at the bottom end of the market it's not going to be so much of a problem this year and so I think we'll see less, uh, less pressure at the bottom end. While the inflation story could be better in 2012 than it was last year the overall picture for retail is mixed. The squeeze on incomes is set to continue and retailers are being forced to adapt and react to changing consumer behaviour. Even the luxury sector, which last year cashed in on the super rich, could be affected. It looks like 2012 could be a difficult year for retailers across the board. Daniel Garraham, Financial Times, London.